throughout MLB history, only two players have this combination of career stats. 250 home runs, 550 doubles, 400 stolen bases, and a 125 OPS plus. Those two players are Bobby Abreu and Barry Bonds. The pitch. There's a long one to right field. Forget about it. This one is headed for New Jersey. High into the upper deck. Now, cherry-picked stats don't make someone a Hall of Famer, but it certainly places them in the conversation. The rise of sabermetrics has created new ways to compare current and potential Hall of Famers. Some of these stats include war or wins above replacement, war seven, the sum of a player's seven best war seasons, and finally, JAWS, a metric specifically made to maintain or improve the Hall of Fame standards by electing players who are at least as good as the average Hall of Famer at those players' positions. So let's play a quick game. In the corner is the War, War 7, and Jaws of the average Hall of Fame right fielder. Two of these three players are the most recent right fielders to be voted into the Hall of Fame, Vladimir Guerrero and Larry Walker. And the other one is Bobby Abreu. Which one is Abreu? Well, I lied to you. While two of these players are Guerrero and Walker, the other is Gary Sheffield, someone who's currently on the ballot but with many more votes than Abreu. Notice how similar Guerrero, Sheffield, and Abreu stats are. But this doesn't tell the full story. Guerrero and Walker both won MVPs, and Sheffield won a ring and hit over 500 home runs. But his links to steroid usage harm his chances for induction. Nonetheless, simplifying a player's career into a few stats is a controversial way to evaluate a Hall of Fame resume, especially when those stats are as borderline as Abreu's. Clearly, he isn't universally considered a Hall of Fame caliber player, but the story and context of his career may convince you otherwise. Abreu made his big league debut in 1996 as an Astro, but after a couple years, he was selected in the 1997 expansion draft by the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, and only a few hours later, he was traded to the Philadelphia Phillies. Immediately, the 24 year old Abreu became an impact player, playing over 150 games with an OPS over 900. However, while a 900 OPS is great in any era, it was much more commonplace at this time than in any other time in MLB history. In 1998, 36 qualified players had an OPS of 900 or more. In 2022, this number fell to five. Now, to be fair, this past season was filled with abnormally low offensive production, but even comparing 1998 to the high offense environment of 2019, you can see how different it used to be. The late 90s and early 2000s were the peak of an era characterized by incredibly high offensive production, the same era Bobby Abreu found himself in. Between 1998 and 2004, the seven seasons that make up Abreu's War 7, he finished six of the seven seasons with an OPS over 900. But again, so did many other players. Although, Abreu was one of only 11 players to have at least six 900 OPS seasons during the seven year span. However, while every single player in this group either won an MVP or finished top five in MVP voting, Abreu's highest MVP placement during this span was 16th in 2001. This was the season where he set career highs in home runs and RBIs, two of the most valued stats at the time. Compared to the rest of the league, Abreu wasn't a big home run hitter. Instead, he routinely hit over 300, had a 400 on base percentage, hit 40 plus doubles, and had 20 plus stolen bases. He did this three times between 1998 and 2004. You wanna know how many players have done this multiple times in their career? Only 10. Eight of them are Hall of Famers, while the other two are Abreu and Shoeless Joe Jackson. The last player to do this was Mookie Betts in his 2018 MVP season, one of the greatest seasons in modern baseball history. In contrast, Abreu didn't receive a single MVP vote in 2000 or 2002, likely due to having less than 30 home runs, less than 100 RBIs, and being on a sub-500 team. In 2004, he made his first All-Star game and won his first and only Silver Slugger, but he had to accomplish a lot to finally receive some recognition. You want to know how many players in MLB history have had at least 75 extra base hits, 100 RBIs, 125 walks, and 40 stolen bases in the same season? One, Bobby Abreu. Overall, he didn't fit in this era, especially considering many of the best power hitters of this time were outfielders. Now, I'm not saying people only valued home runs and RBIs back then, and now suddenly we don't. 
But between the home run chase of 1998 and Bonds' 73 home run season in 2001, it's clear that home runs mattered most. While that's somewhat still true today, many more stats are now used to capture the value of a player. Between 1998 and 2006, the entirety of a Braves Phillies tenure, he tied with Alex Rodriguez for the most seasons with at least a 125 OPS plus and 5 war. In fact, since 1998, only 8 players have done this in at least 7 different seasons. In total, Abreu had 7 seasons where he hit at least 20 home runs, 35 doubles, stole 20 bases, and walked 100 times. Only 7 other players have done this, but none of them have done it as much as Abreu. Ultimately, his peak came at a time where his unique skill set couldn't compete with the league's top power hitters. And combining this with the fact he routinely played for non-playoff Philly teams, it was near impossible for him to gain any sort of national recognition. 2004 and 2005 were his best seasons in terms of awards, as he made two All-Star games, won a Silver Slugger one year, and won a Gold Glove the next. Ironically, he won the 2005 Home Run Derby in record-breaking fashion with 24 home runs in a single round and 41 total. However, following the season, Abreu was traded to the Yankees in mid-2006. But despite joining a Yankees team that made the playoffs for over a decade straight, he missed out on a career-defining moment. The 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss, struck him out! The Philadelphia Phillies are 2008 World Champions of Baseball! Less than two years after Abreu was traded to the Yankees, the Phillies won the World Series. To be fair, he was happy for them, saying, I knew they built the team so hard to win the championship, and I was there the years before and knew how hard my teammates worked. I'm very happy for them. I know I wasn't part of it, but in my heart, I'm part of it. I'm a Phillies player, and I'm a member of the Phillies family. Still, it was a missed opportunity. Although, 2008 was his second full season as a Yankee, and while while he clearly wasn't at his peak anymore, he was still an above average hitter. And if you don't know, the Yankees were the 2009 World Series champions, which means Abreu actually did end up winning a ring. Well, not exactly. Abreu played in two different postseasons with the Yankees, and he played well. But after the 2008 season, Abreu signed a one-year deal with the Angels. So once again, he missed out on a championship. Although the 2009 Angels were quite the team. In total, there were 10 players who had played at least 100 games and had an OPS Plus of at least 100, one of only three teams ever to have at least 10 players do this. Abreu had a great season and postseason, with his most notable hit coming in Game 3 of the ALDS, which allowed Vladimir Guerrero to hit a two-run home run and eventually win the series. But the Angels went on to lose in the ALCS to the eventual champions, the New York Yankees. Abreu went on to re-sign with the Angels, but he never played in another postseason. Also, age eventually caught up to him, leading to his release in mid-2012. He went on to play for the Dodgers for the rest of 2012 and for the Mets in 2014, retiring after the season. An 18-year career had reached its end, but what a career it was. Incredible stats, a few accolades, and most importantly, a career Abreu was proud of. I feel happy with my career. I feel blessed. For me as a baseball player, I achieved all my goals. But the question is, was this career Hall of Fame worthy? Well, Abreu knew he wasn't a home run guy, but he also knew he did a lot of great things, and he believes people are finally starting to see what he accomplished. Throughout MLB history, Abreu leads everyone with the most number of 15 home run, 20 stolen base seasons. Although, if we add the requirement of at least 35 doubles, Abreu's lead widens immensely. Okay, how about career stats? How about 250 home runs, 400 stolen bases, and 2400 hits? We get five players. Three of them are Hall of Famers, along with Barry Bonds and Abreu. Now, if we add something like a 125 OPS+, plus, Craig Biggio falls off this list, and we're left with these four. Okay, I think I've shown enough stats to plead Abreu's case, but even then, there's still the stigma that he isn't a Hall of Fame caliber player. Here's what MLB Network reporter Mark Feinsand had to say. 
I'm not a believer that Abreu is a Hall of Famer. He had a Hall-worthy start to his career, but I think the back half was very average. And when you think of the best players of his generation, I don't ever think of him. He had the misfortune of playing in an offensively loaded era, which hurts his case, at least as far as perception goes. Speaking of perception, evaluating his defense is tricky. Abreu won a gold glove in 2005, but he was an objectively bad defender that year. In fact, he spent the majority of his career as an average to below average defender. However, there were a couple years where if he won a gold glove, it would make sense, notably 1998 and 2003. Phillies beat writer Todd Zalecki had a similar viewpoint, saying Abreu wasn't gold glove caliber, but he wasn't a bad defender. However, he did add that some had a different perspective. In the eyes of some Phillies fans, Abreu wasn't the type of player to crash into the wall or go all out on plays. He once responded to this criticism in 2006. I play hard. I might not dive. I might not run into walls, but I play every day. I play when I'm hurt. I hear what people say. They say I don't play hard. They say I don't care. I care. He wasn't wrong. He played very often. Abreu is one of only 11 players ever to play at least 150 games in 13 different seasons, which is part of the reason why between 1998 and 2010, he led all outfielders in outfield assists, but at the same time, he had the third most errors. Still, to play consistently well for a long amount of time is both rare and impressive. If he missed, say, 100 to 150 more games throughout his career, he'd probably be in the position of guys like Johnny Damon, Bernie Williams, and Luis Gonzalez. All great players, but not quite Hall of Fame caliber. Overall, I think most will agree that Abreu's talents weren't appreciated as much as they should have been. But does that make him worthy of a spot in Cooperstown? Ultimately, it comes down to whether you're a small hall voter or a big hall voter. Do you feel the Hall of Fame should only be reserved for the best of the best? Or is there some leeway for borderline guys like Abreu? Also, while the era he played in wasn't ideal for the type of player he was, I'd argue he retired at the perfect time considering how the baseball world has evolved in terms of valuing stats like on base percentage and war. Still, he's only on about 20% of public ballots and he'll likely end up around the 15% mark. It may not sound like a lot, but that's nearly double the number of votes he got last year. Also, right fielder Larry Walker fell as low as 10.2% and he eventually got voted in. But at the same time, Walker has an MVP, gold gloves, silver sluggers, and a batting title. Even if he doesn't get in, I just hope Abreu gets more recognition for his remarkable career. He may not have gotten a bunch of rewards, nor did he play in an era that appreciated his style of play, but he'll go down as one of the most consistently dominant hitters of his generation. Perhaps not a Hall of Fame career, but certainly a memorable one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.